Welcome back to Ellen 14 Presents. I'm Lorraine, and this week we're going to make an air hockey table. So I just love um, air hockey tables. I always uh, play them when I go on holiday. And um, I thought to myself, you know, why don't I just build one at home? It'd be brilliant. Uh, so what is air hockey then? It's kind of like this thin layer, we're going to make this out of acrylic, that's full of holes to let the air flow through. So underneath then is a box that must have some sort of pump in it. Um, so we're going to add a pump. Probably not going to fit it inside the box, so we're going to add it outside the box and it's going to pump air into the box. Um, and we're going to have goals at either end. We're going to have a puck, uh, probably 3D print the puck, um, and then we're going to have paddles, which again, probably 3D print them, so they're kind of round with a little handle to hold on to. The scores, I'm not quite sure how we're going to detect a score. Some sort of laser or distance sensor here that detects when the puck goes through there. And, and that's it. It looks really simple. <laughs> Um, but I'm not quite sure how simple it's going to be. This box needs to be super sturdy. Um, so inside the box, I'm thinking of adding um, screws and tabs to hold it all together. So I'm going to laser cut this box from plywood. But then I'm going to have like struts. So we think of a bridge like that somehow. And then going across as well. That, that would be it if it was flat, you know lots of struts going across like that to hold everything together because there's going to be a lot of force um, on this table um, from the players and the fan so it needs to hold together really well um, it's going to be limited by the size of my laser cutter so even though i've got a huge laser cutter it's not as big as a table <laughs> it doesn't cut table size pieces so we're going to go as big as we can a little, like a little tabletop kind of hockey table it'll be cool I'm going to design the um, puck that I'm going to 3D print. Um, so I use Tinkercad, which is kind of like a really simple program. Um, I don't really go too complicated when I'm 3D printing stuff. So this is the puck. It's a circle and it's going to be three mil high. Um, and then it's going to have a little groove kind of in the middle to let the air kind of catch in the middle of the puck. Um, so we're going to align this a uh, smaller circle, which is just like a hole um, in the center of this circle and then raise it up by two mil. So it's only a one mil hole. And that's it. That's my puck. I really like Thinkercad. It's just really nice and easy. Um, so I've exported that as an STL, imported it into my um, 3D printing software. And we're going to start printing that. I'm going to design the box in uh, Lightworks, which is a laser cutting software. And my old husband thinks this is not the way I should do it. I should do it in something like FreeCAD, which is a 3D design software. But I think like things like FreeCAD can be overkill. Um, yeah, it is a box. It is a 3D box, but it's just a lot of flat surfaces. So it's just, I find it easier to do in the Lightworks. And here's the bottom. And here's the bottom of the hockey table. So we have the crosses in the middle are going to hold the struts in place. And then we also have the side tabs. Here are the sides of the table then. So one of the sides needs room for the fan, um, which I'm just going to leave as this kind of default size. Work out some sort of adapter for the different fans we're going to use. These are fun. These are like the little screws and bolts. They're going to hold everything together. Uh, I used these before. I'm not convinced by them but we'll see how it goes. The tabs also should hold everything down a lot tighter. Okay, so here's all the pieces that I've uh, laser cut. So that's a side panel where the pump goes in. Uh, this is an end panel. This is the big middle strut and small struts. Then we have um, the side curves panels. And then finally the board itself so the acrylic board that we're going to play on had to poke up all these holes uh which was but very satisfying um, so this gives you an idea of the size of this so it really is a tabletop 
uh, air hockey game, which is fine. It's going to look cool. Now, I don't know whether to make some kind of or like uh, make some kind of stickers for this, like a like a circle, you know, like a, a hockey match kind of pitch looks like, or whether to paint it. You know, which one would look better? I know the stickers will stay on, but just kind of looks a bit bland at the moment. But let's get it assembled. So this is the box assembled and um, purely just using pressure, <laughs> not with any screws yet. So this is just using all the tabs. So the next thing is to add all the screws in the holes, but I'm really liking it so far. It's really like, besides that bit that just fell out, it feels like those struts are going to really hold it together very well. Um, so it's going to be bashed, you know, people, well, People in my family play air, air hockey with a lot of uh, <laughs> emotion. So it's like a lot of pressure is going to be on this box. So it needs to be sturdy um, and it looks really good. And the lines from the struts from a boat look really good as well. And um, I thought they would look, you know, a bit rubbish. They kind of look like they're meant to be there. And um, so I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to add um, the screws. This box is not going to be airtight, which is absolutely fine. You know, there's loads of places that air is going to leak out. Um, this is just really, this is a big hole. So we're going to cover these with these curves and also to make it look good as well. So here's one of the screws. This is the arch holding in one of the sign panels. So you can see the, the nut there. That's how that works. Here's the box assembled with all the screws. Uh, I did make an error in the end pieces. Um, these holes are too high, so you can see that gap there. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, oh, free stuff? Good to go? Yeah. Should I hold it? <laughs> The whole thing. Oh, oh. Yes! <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Nice. So I'm really happy with that fan test. That was the massive fan uh, from the old laser cutter. So we still have a few more fan options to go through. Uh, but it was really exciting to see the puck move around. And I think the puck is also the perfect size. It just worked um, really well. Got to think about the handles and all the um, electronics next. I didn't really plan the electronics into the box. Like there's plenty of room inside the box for the electronics, but I haven't like designed it. I haven't uh, laser cut holes or like thought about where the electronics is going to go. That's kind of the next stage. I was a bit too excited about the box, to be honest. <laughs> um, but the next stage is the electronics, which is going to be its scoring system. So some sort of um, sensor here that's going to detect when a goal is scored. Um, so we're going to figure that out now over the next few days. What would you use? So electronics wise then, I've gone for an Arduino Uno and this kind of uh, photo transistor, which is like, it just detects basically light changes in front of it. And these really simple, really cheap seven segment displays. Mine is in red, um, but the one I've put on the shopping list, which you can find in the link below is green. Couldn't find the red one, but it works the same. Um, and I'll also add the diagram, the kind of the circuit diagram to show you how I connected all this together. This is for, this bit here is just for the light sensor. Um, started adding this, wait, you see this, is has like 10 pins. Look at that. So that's a lot of pins um, to start wiring up from a breadboard. And it's like, where is this gonna live on the box? I really should have uh, planned this a bit better. Um, so what I decided to do was to make a little PCB for this, um, to make things a little neater. And here's one we made earlier. <laughs> So I could make a whole other video, a whole 20, 25 minute video on how I made this PCB. Um, I basically milled it. Um, I made, had to do a little bodge there for that 
thing there. But otherwise, I'm actually really happy with it. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you want to see that video of how you can mill your own PCBs. So it just makes everything a lot neater. So every, all these wires are now come out here at this, these pins um, that I've got down here. It was a bit fiddly soldering everything together, but it's just so much neater. And I've got these holes here to mount it onto the side. Um, so that's player one score and that's player two score. Uh, let me show you it working before I go on to the code. Uh, so I'm just going to reset. I have the board upside down. So player two is always um, one and player one is this sensor here. So if we wave our hand in front of it. It will change, uh, but then it pauses for three seconds. Yeah, so that's how it works. In that demo, I didn't realize how much the lights flickered. Um, they actually are constantly updating, so a little bit better in this dimmed light. But if I put on complete darkness, yeah, so you can still see them very slightly. One at a time, they're changing their brightness. But to the naked eye, you can't see that at all. So you can't see this kind of flickering. Only on the camera. <laughs> see if we can score a goal in the dark. Hey! Let's have a look at the code then for the sensor and the seven segment display. So we just set up all our variables. You should have seen the fun I had remembering to put semicolons in <laughs> this code because I'm such a Python developer. Um, so we set up all our pins as outputs. So the eight pins here are the eight segments, seven segments of the display. And then this is to control the first number and this is to control the second number. We have a lot of functions to display different numbers and the score, but here's our main loop. I'll add some comments uh, before I upload this so it makes a bit more sense. Here's the main loop. So we get the value from the sensor of player one and then we give ourselves three seconds. So if the value, the brightness is over 15, um, upstairs 10 was okay. So you got to kind of test what your brightness is before you set this number. Um, so downstairs it needed to be a bit more. We increase player one scores and then we reset the timer. Um, this is just for player one. I haven't wired up player two yet. And then we display each player's score. So player one and player two. This is really confusing. So this, this is off. We turn off the numbers, their brightness. So when you're changing the number, you don't get any bleeding on on the um, seven, seven segment display. This is a lot of test code. It took me a long time to figure out which numbers were which for this specific seven segment display. Um, but eventually figured it out, I'll add this code and the fritzing diagram for you guys. So here's everything um, bodged together completely. <laughs> so I really need to reprint the side and print like an arch for this to properly screw into because I made mounting holes so I may as well mount it but right now uh, I'm just a bit too excited <laughs> and I've just taped it on. Here's the um, the paddle so that printed really nicely look at that and that's another um, Tinkercad creation so I'll add the file uh, to the files below and um, we're going to add the sensor over here. Uh, I thought I had a second sensor but I can't find it so um, we're just going to demo it working by scoring a goal in this direction. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna buy a second sensor and add it all up. We're also gonna tidy this up and the Arduino is also behind here on the ground. So that needs kind of uh, a better setup, maybe inside the box. So the Arduino goes in like there, the wires go in there and through there inside the box and then the sensor just kind of pops out there. So it's a lot neater um, and the same on that side. And then it'll be, it'll be perfect. Obviously it will never be perfect, but it'll be good enough. So the photo transistor isn't the way to go here. Um, so you can see my son does score goal there on one. I had to change the code to work out the average kind of reading. And then if it was 10% below the average, then it was a goal. You see there it went to two and then it went to three just because its hand was too close to the goal. Um, and that one didn't record at all. So, it's just not, there's four. <laughs> it's just not a perfect solution. Um, I think maybe like a laser break with a, a bigger goal, like some more, like a landing 
area behind the goal would be better in this situation. Um, also stops us from having to do this and go grab the ball every time it falls off the table. But I'm really happy with the, the airflow. Even with all the gaps in the box, you can see it's really, the puck is flowing really nicely and even the, the paddle floats a little bit. Besides the technical problems, we really love this. I had so much fun making this air hockey table. I really loved uh, making the box, as you could tell, because that's where all my time went. Um, it's not perfect and I would never make a video if I ever produced anything that was perfect because something can always be improved. On this, I think uh, making the box a bit more custom so the electronics fit on it a bit better, painting the box and also having some multicolor LEDs because that's what makes the air hockey table and some sounds, you know, the, the atmosphere of the lights and the sound and playing our air hockey adds to the experience. What would you add to it? And what other arcade games would you like me to make? Let me know over at the Element 14 community. Until next time.